What's going on everyone, Scott here, and in this week's video, I'm going to explain to you how you can sell on Amazon.com even if you live outside the USA. If you enjoy learning about e-commerce and selling on Amazon, then be sure to hit that subscribe button below and push that notification bell so you get notified every time I post a new video every single Tuesday. All right, so let's dive right in. And the first thing I wanna make clear is that yes, you can absolutely sell on Amazon.com without being a US resident or citizen. You can sell on the US marketplace from basically anywhere in the world. And in this video, we're gonna go over all the different things you need to keep in mind when you wanna do this. I wouldn't say it's overly complicated to do this, but there's certain things you need to be mindful of and I'm gonna go over them in this video. All right, so the first question I see posed a lot is where should I register my business? Should I register an LLC in the United States or should I register a company within my own home country? The simplest answer I can give you is that you likely wanna register your business in your home country. And this is because of taxes. If you register your business in the United States, you will have to pay taxes for your company in the United States. However, you may also have to file taxes in your home country. For simplicity, it's so much easier to register a corporation within your home country. This is the route I went and it's been relatively simple. I was able to get an accountant in my home country who knew the Canadian laws, as I'm in Canada, and I was able to file my taxes here without an issue. All right, so once you've got that sorted out, the next thing you need to do is sign up for a Seller Central account. Now you don't wanna just create an account in any country. You don't wanna to go to your home country necessarily and sign up for an account there because it may not be eligible to sell in the US marketplace. Now there are some exceptions to this rule. For instance, I'm in Canada and if I register on amazon.ca, I'm eligible to sell anywhere in North America. I can sell in the Canadian marketplace, the US marketplace and the Mexico marketplace. And I'm gonna give a little pro tip to all you Canadian sellers out there. If you were to go to amazon.com and register for a Seller Central account, you will be charged $40 a month for the professional account. However, if you go to amazon.ca and register for your Seller Central account through the Canadian site, you will be charged $29.99 Canadian for your Seller Central account. You still get all the perks of being able to sell continent wide. However, you get to save a few dollars every month. However, if you live outside North America, it's possible that your home country may not be eligible to sell on the US marketplace. Therefore, you may wanna just go to amazon.com directly and sign up for your account there. All right, so when you sign up for your account, you may be prompted to fill out a W8BEN form. And what this does is it identifies you as a non-US person. If you do not fill out this form correctly, Amazon will automatically take 30% off of your disbursements. That means all the money you make, Amazon will take 30% off the top to cover taxes. This form tells them that you'll be filing taxes in your home country, and therefore they will release the full 100% of your disbursements to you. And then it's your responsibility to file their taxes at the end of the year. So when you're presented with this form, be sure to fill it out correctly. Take your time and make sure it's done well. All right, we're gonna jump ahead a little bit now in the Amazon selling life cycle. So let's say that you've done your product research, you've done your keyword research, and you've even found a manufacturer to make your product for you. Now it's time to place your order. All right, so you talk to your manufacturer and let's say you want them to create 500 units for you. You wanna make sure that these 500 units are up to your standards. However, you can't exactly ship them to you because you don't live in the United States and having the product shipped to you to inspect and then shipped to the United States would be very costly and would probably eat up your entire profit margin. So I strongly suggest you hire an inspection company in the country of manufacturing to inspect the product for you. If you've ordered your product through Alibaba, have a company in China go inspect the product for you. You can inform them how many units you want them to inspect and what standards and what specifics you're asking them to look for. This can save you a huge headache and a lot of money if you find that there's something wrong with your product ahead of time. If you were to skip this step and ship your inventory to Amazon, it will be listed on Amazon and if there's something wrong, your customers are going to let you know about it. They're gonna give you those dreaded one-star reviews and it's gonna tank your listing. Overall, it's gonna hurt your sales drastically. So do yourself a favor and get an inspection done. Along those same lines, you may wanna hire a freight forwarding company to ship your goods from the manufacturer to the warehouses in the United States. Some suppliers will offer DDP shipping, which is delivered duties paid. This means that your supplier will ensure that your goods are shipped from their warehouse to the Amazon warehouse. However, there's definitely some merit in investigating freight forwarders. For instance, not all suppliers will offer DDP shipping. They may offer DDU, which is delivered duties unpaid. So if there's any duties that need to be collected on the product, you'll be on the hook for it. If you're not in the United States to pay for it, then you're gonna have some difficulties trying to get that payment to them. If you hire a freight forwarder, they'll make sure that everything is handled for you. They are experts in this field and will certainly make your life easier. So definitely look into using a freight forwarder for your shipments. 
One inevitable aspect of selling on Amazon is those dreaded returns. It's going to happen and there's nothing you can do about it. You're never going to please everybody and some people are just going to ask for their money back. So when it comes to these returns, what happens to the item that gets returned? Well, Amazon will inspect it and see if it's in sellable condition. If they think it can be resold, they will put it back in your inventory and you'll be able to try and resell that same product. However, there are times when it just cannot be resold. Perhaps the customer had ripped the box it came in, or they'd lost a part, or some, who knows. Anything could have happened and the product can no longer be resold as new. Amazon has no option other than to remove it from your inventory and you basically are left with two options. One, you can create a removal order, or two, you can dispose of the item. Now here's one of the downsides to living outside the US. If you live outside the US and sell in the US marketplace, Amazon will not ship your unfulfillable items back to you outside of the country. They will only ship the item within the United States. So if you want to get your product back, you have to ship it to a third party address who will then ship it to you. This can be rather costly as you have to pay for the shipping from Amazon to the third party and then to pay the third party to ship it to you. Generally speaking, it's just not worth it if the margins are very low. If it's a low cost item, it's much simpler to just have Amazon dispose of the item. I know you don't like hearing that, throwing away money and throwing your product in the garbage, but sometimes it's just the most cost effective way. So definitely think long and hard about this if your product has a high value. If it's an expensive product and you need to recoup it, have a plan in place to get your returns back. All right, so the next topic I wanna to discuss is taxes and bookkeeping. Now, this is not a big deal if you're an individual seller or a sole proprietor, but if you're a company or a corporation, you need to keep updated books and you're gonna to wanna to keep on top of your taxes to file your corporate tax return. So first of all, the product I use to keep track of my Amazon disbursements and keep them in my bookkeeping is a software called A2X. A2X automatically picks up all your payments from Amazon and the breakdown of what's involved in them and transfer them to the software of your choice. The product I use is QuickBooks Online, and they have a few different subscription models, but the one I suggest you get if you live outside the US is the Essentials Plan. And the reason for this is that it has multi-currency. So for me, I live in Canada, so my home currency is Canadian dollars. However, all of my transactions on Amazon are done in US dollars, so I need to convert the US dollars to Canadian dollars for tax purposes. With A2X, it transmits all the data from Amazon directly into my bookkeeping, automatically into the categories that I indicate. This process makes it extremely simple and I can't fathom trying to do this myself every two weeks. My last tip is rather important as it can save you a lot of money. And that has to do with your banking. All right, so when you set up your account on Amazon, you need to give it a bank account to send your money to. Now keep in mind that you're getting paid in US dollars and Amazon is going to initially pay you in those US dollars. Even though amazon.com is done in US dollars, you don't necessarily need to have a US bank account to get your money. For instance, I'm in Canada and I could link a Canadian bank account to my amazon.com marketplace account. Therefore, every two weeks when Amazon pays me, it will see that I have a Canadian bank account, it'll convert my money to Canadian dollars and automatically deposit my money there. You might think this is extremely simple, and it is, but the problem here is that Amazon is the one converting your money and they are definitely doing a preferred exchange rate in their favor. If you add a foreign bank account to your amazon.com account, you're going to incur exchange rate fees and those fees can add up. You might think about opening a US dollar bank account at your local bank, and you don't want to go this route either. Let me explain. So I'm in Canada and I can go to my local branch and open a US dollar bank account. If I then add that account to Amazon, what's gonna happen is Amazon will see that the bank account I'm trying to send it to is Canadian, and therefore they'll try to send it in Canadian dollars. They don't care what the currency of the account is, they care what country the bank is in. So they see a Canadian bank and they, they convert it to Canadian dollars at their exchange rate and they send it to my bank. My bank receives the money and then they see that it's going to a US dollar account and so they convert it back into US dollars at their preferred exchange rate. Therefore, I've been hit with two large exchange rate fees. You definitely don't want to do this. So what's the solution? And the answer is to open a US based bank account. That means a bank account that actually resides in the United States. It may not be simple for everyone to just call up a US bank and open a bank account, but there is a simple solution. I recently switched over my US dollar banking to OFX's global currency account. I can link this account directly to Amazon and have the disbursements paid straight to this account. The funds can then stay there until I want to transfer them, or I can even use this account to pay my suppliers directly. Therefore, I don't get hit with any exchange rate fees. Additionally, if I want to extract the money in Canadian dollars, OFX has much better exchange rates than the traditional banks, saving me a ton of money. 
Traditionally, when you initiate a transfer from OFX, they usually charge you $15. However, there's a link in my description below. If you want to try OFX and sign up with that link specifically, they will waive the $15 fee on all your transfers going forward. So if you initiate a transfer out of OFX after signing up with that link, you will find that you will only be charged the marginal exchange rate, which is much better than the traditional banks. So give it a shot. There's a link in the description. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you have any questions about selling on the US marketplace from outside the United States, please leave a comment below. I have experience with this and I'd be happy to help you if you have any questions. If you're new to selling on Amazon, make sure you check out my Before Starting Amazon FBA checklist. It's available completely free in the description below. If you got any value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up as it really helps the video get noticed by the YouTube algorithm and will really help the channel grow. I really appreciate your support with this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.